with Rod Tang fights, there's this constant steady pressure that he uses. He's not a really fast starter, but he's but he's not a notorious slow starter either. He, he does pick at his opponents, but he's very consistent in his pacing and his range. And this finish of Sokti, this was an early second round finish, is it's one of the best demonstrations of basic Muay Thai skills that I've ever seen. I just I just love the way that he dismantles him. The way that he picks his shots and he mixes his targets, and he's really not doing anything particularly complex. I mean, look. Hook, low kick. Teep. Jab, hook, hook, low kick. Nothing complex, hook, low kick. But look, now you can see Sokti's legs hurting. He goes body shot, low kick that time. Here we go again. This is the second knockdown. Hook, hook, low kick. Body hook, head hook. And same again. He's not doing anything particularly complex, but now look at the space between him and Sokti. He's feeling very pressured. His lead leg is hurt, massively hurt. So if Rod, can, if Rod Tang can put DJ up against the, the, the fence in the first round and beat his legs up, that's going to take away a lot of the things that DJ does well. It's going to take away his movement and his footwork. It's going to make his takedowns more difficult as well. Of course, DJ is not going to stand there and, and be, be beaten up like that. And, and this is where I think the circle plays into DJ's advantage. Because in a, in a boxing ring, in a Muay Thai ring, Rod Tang would be able to trap him in the corner. But DJ's got such good movement and he never finds himself backed up against the fence. Uh, and, unless he gets turned off the fence, which we've seen a few times. I mean, Rod Tang might be strong enough to turn him off the fence. But in, in the opening round, I mean, this... Well... <laughs> You've just seen Rod Tang in his ideal case scenario where he's walking Sokti down and he's just picking him with shots. Hook, low kick, jab, hook, low kick. Really, really simple stuff. Then you think to yourself, okay, now they're in this circle. DJ's not going to stand in front of him. It's going to look far more like this with DJ in and out of range and bouncing around and being very erratic and difficult to understand, difficult to pin down. Like, he is not going to be easy to control. Look, in and out of range, switching his stances, constantly changing his line. See how he drifts across there. Like, constantly changing his line. Constantly changing the distance between him and his opponents as well. So he's not there for Rod Tang just to, just to hit at, at will. Rod Tang is going to really have to be aggressive with his footwork and, and be, con be very controlling with the way that he cuts DJ down if he's going to be able to land clean shots on him. And then the second round arrives and DJ's level changing. His speed and transition into the takedown is phenomenal. Rod Tang in the first round and in the third round, of course he doesn't have that fear that uh, DJ is going to level change and take him down. So he can really push forward and he can be very aggressive. And something that he'll take confidence from is that DJ's not really a, got a combination striker. Like he, he's in and out of range and he'll pick you and he'll move and he'll throw a kick and he'll move and... Everything is like single shot, single shot. If he steps in and starts throwing combinations, as we've seen in the past, he often gets clipped. He often gets hurt. You know, he's been dropped in the first round before. I'm not saying that Rod Tang's going to be able to catch him and hurt him in the first round. But if if there's no danger of being taken down, Rod Tang has to push forward into that range. Because the, the second round and the fourth round could be absolute nightmares. He might not even hear the bell in those rounds. So... If you're Rod Tang, you've got to make the most of those those rounds. That first round starts, he's got to walk forward. He's got to walk through anything that DJ's trying to throw back at him and aggressively cut him down because he's got three minutes to work. That's not a long time. You know, it took him four minutes to stop Sokti and Sokti stood in front of him taking those shots. DJ's going to be on his bike. He's going to be moving. He's going to be stinging him and switching his stance. And there's going to be a lot for Rod Tang to comprehend in that first round. Now, what we do love about Rod Tang, and one of the reasons why he's called the tank, is because he does like to march forward. And he's got a wicked left hook. So if he can keep pushing forward, keep driving DJ towards the fence, then any time he starts to creep out the side, he's going to start clubbing him with that left hook. But, I mean, look at the, look at the attitude on him here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, all the way through Rod Tang's career, I mean, 267 wins on his record. Well, yeah, 267, 42, and 10 is Rod Tang's Muay Thai record, compared to DJ's 30 wins, 4 losses, and 1 draw in MMA. Um, Rod Tang, as far as I can see, has not won in the first round. It, it, well, as far as his, re his recorded career uh, goes, I've not seen him win in the first round. But what I have seen him do is hurt people in the first round. What I have seen him do is do his, his good work in the first round and ability to break people down and get to them even when they're trying to get away from him. But you're still seeing you know, a lot of these guys he's fighting are standing in the pocket. They're standing trading with him. There's that left hook. Look at that. 
catches him on the way out. Lovely shot. He has got an excellent left hook, but he's going to have to be like aggressive and confident in pushing forward to try and take some of that movement away from DJ. Now, we have seen DJ struggle a bit with low kicks in the past, and I do think that that's something that Rod Tank can use, but you know, there's always the risk of him trading those low kicks with the, you know, with those quick long punches that DJ's got. Like, this is the Rod Tank that we need to see from the very opening bell, like walking forward behind a tight guard and and forcing DJ into a close range uh, fight. This is the left hook I'm talking about. Like pushing forward Catches him on the counter there as, uh, as as Sergio steps in. There's definitely the opportunity to, to catch DJ, but it's not going to be nearly as often as it is with these other guys he's fought in Muay Thai and kickboxing. DJ is going to be using his footwork at a far larger amount. And the other thing you have to consider as well for DJ is that these are three-minute rounds. Like the guys uh, this morning were sparring three-minute rounds. And it just seems like it goes in no time at all. If you're used to fighting five-minute rounds, for whatever reason, three minutes seems like it's not even half a round. So, like, in DJ's mind, it's like, okay, I've got three minutes. I'm going to be elusive, and I'm going to pick him off as he's, as, as he's moving towards me, but not stay in and engage and start catching those body shots and low kicks that we've seen. Because they're the things that will make a difference to DJ. Then when the second round starts out, and then, of course, now Rod Tang's got an entirely different mindset. Now he knows that he can't march forward with reckless abandon because DJ is most likely going to level change. So now the game is, how do I stop DJ taking me down in order to stay on my feet as long as I can? And Rod Tang might be specifically focused on takedown defense in the second round. He might be entirely focused on trying to catch um, DJ with a knee as he, as he comes in for a takedown. But, you know, it's going to be a battle in that second round. And if he gets into the third round, then he's back to Muay Thai. And then DJ's, you know, he's two rounds deep and he's a little bit discouraged because he wasn't able to put him out in the second because that would be a massive confidence hit for DJ. And then if he's dealing with this Rod Tang that he's back walking him down, confidence he can take his power shots and keeps digging to the body and chopping the legs, then, you know, you might see DJ start to get hurt. And then, you know, it becomes a far more interesting fight. Like, lovely work following shots in. Anything that DJ throws when he's on the feet is going to be vulnerable to Rod Tang. Anytime he opens himself up, there's going to be counters there because you don't have... I'm not even going to do the maths because I'm going to be terrible at it. Uh, 200, 300 and something. <laughs> A load of Muay Thai fights. You've got to think, you know, he's seen everything. He's seen everything over that time. He knows where he's, where he's capable, he knows where he's dangerous, and he knows where he's at danger in this fight. He's also had a few runouts in in the Muay Thai circle with the small gloves on, so even those MMA rounds aren't going to feel too weird for him, aside from when DJ's wrapped around his legs. 